मीटिंग ऑफ जी एस टी काउंसिल हेल्ड कैंसर ड्रग्स एग्जेड फ्रॉम जी एस टी ऑनलाइन गेमिंग बिकेम एक्सपेंसिव रुपी विल बी इंटरनेशनलाइज आर बी आई इज इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल ग्रुप रेकमेंडेड एम्फोसिस ऑन रोड मैप टू मेक रुपी एन इंटरनेशनल करेंसी Forest Conservation Act will be amended. The bill is expected to be introduced in the monsoon session. Signs of major change in the rules. New discoveries in the field of quantum computing. Now Majorana zero mode will be used. Easy to solve complex problems. And 415 million Indians moved out of poverty progress achieved over a period of 15 years UNDP released the report Recently the meeting of GST that is goods and services tax council was concluded this was the 50th meeting of the GST council many major decisions were taken in this meeting chaired by the finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman In this cancer drugs have been exempted from GST under this it has been decided to give exemption on the drug denotuximab used in the serious cancer disease along with this it has also been announced to give exemption on medicines used in the treatment of rare diseases apart from this it has also been decided to keep food items for special medical purposes out of tax slab of GST Whereas 28% GST has been recommended on online gaming and horse racing. In this meeting the council has also talked about the establishment of GST appellate tribunals in the country. If news is to be believed then these statutory bodies will start within next 4 to 6 months to resolve GST disputes. In the initial phase their benches will be set up in the capitals of the states. as well as at those places where there are benches of the high courts it may be noted that approval has been received from the council for the appointment of tribunal members and the chairman let us inform you that gst is an indirect tax system which was implemented on july 1st 2017 under the 101st constitutional amendment act it was introduced with the slogan one nation one tax taxes under gst are divided into four tax slabs In this tax slabs of 5%, 12%, 18% and 28% have been kept for all goods and services. On the other hand, if we talk about the GST council, it is a joint platform of the center and the states. It is headed by the union finance minister. Along with this, each state can nominate its finance minister or any other minister as a member of the council. Recently the interdepartmental group of the Reserve Bank of India has emphasized on the road map for making the rupee an international currency. Along with this the group has recommended that efforts should be made to include the rupee in the SDR basket that is special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund. It is believed that India will benefit immensely from the internationalization of the rupee. In fact, internationalization will make it possible to use the rupee in cross-border transactions. Along with this, it will be helpful in reducing currency risks for Indian businesses. Significantly, the stability of the currency lowers the cost of trade. Along with this, it is also helpful in the growth of business. Internationalization of rupee will reduce the dependence on foreign exchange. At present, the US dollar is in the strongest position globally. The US dollar is used by all other countries in the world for most of their international transactions. Let us tell you that international currency is the currency which is accepted as a medium of trade or exchange all over the world. At present, US dollar, euro and yen etc are the international currencies of the world. International currency is also known as reserve currency. Whereas SDR is an international reserve asset created by the International Monetary Fund. to supplement the official reserves of its member countries its value is based on a basket of five currencies these include the dollar the euro the chinese renminbi the japanese yen and the british pound recently the delhi high court dismissed pepsico india's patent appeal actually pepsico had filed an appeal for its potato variety fl 2027 
This appeal was made against an order passed by the PPVFRA that is Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers Rights Authority. In fact, PepsiCo had claimed that some farmers in Gujarat were growing potatoes of the FL2027 variety without its permission. According to the company, it had a special contract with the farmers in which the company had the right to sell potato seeds and buy their produce back from the farmer. In the year 2016, the company registered this potato variety under the PPV and FR Act 2001. Let us tell you that FL2027 is a special variety of potato. These potatoes are big in size and high in solid content than other potato varieties. Along with this, the amount of sugar also remains constant in this variety. These properties of FL2027 potato make it highly suitable for the manufacture of chips. Talking about the PPV and FR Act 2001, this act encourages the conservation and development of different varieties of plants. It also provides an effective framework for the conservation of new varieties. Apart from this, it also helps in promoting the seed industry. As per the act, farmers are recognized as plant breeders. They can register their varieties. Let us inform you that UPOV, that is International Union for the Protection of New Varieties of Plants, is an intergovernmental organization. Its headquarter is in Geneva, Switzerland. UPOV's mission is to encourage the development of new varieties of plants for the benefit of society. The Forest Conservation Amendment Bill 2023 has been in news for few days. According to reports, this bill will be introduced in the parliament in the monsoon session. In fact, this bill was being opposed in the past. However, all the objections have been rejected by the Parliamentary Inquiry Committee. In this bill, two types of land will be included in the purview of forest area. First, it will include land which is declared as forest under the Indian Forest Act 1927 or any other law. Second, the law that has been notified as forest on or after October 25, 1980 in the government records will come under the purview of the Act. Significantly, if any kind of construction work is to be done in the forest area, then permission has to be taken from the central government. However, in this bill, exemption has been given to the area adjacent to the international borders. According to the bill, all strategic linear projects of national importance and related to national security within 100 km from international borders will be exempted. In this, no permission will be required for the construction of railway tracks and roads. Apart from this, prior permission will not be required for the construction of security-related infrastructure up to the limit of 10 hectares. This includes activities like defense-related projects, construction of camps for paramilitary forces. Talking about the forest area in India, according to the India State of Forest Report 2021, there has been an increase of 2,261 square kilometer in the tree cover area in the country. The maximum increase in forest area was recorded in Andhra Pradesh. In Andhra Pradesh, there has been an increase of 647 square kilometer forest area. It is followed by Telangana, which saw an increase in forest area of 632 square kilometer. On the third place is Odisha, where an increase of 537 square kilometer was recorded. Apart from this, the country's largest forest area in terms of area is in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Let us tell you that an increase of 17 square kilometer area has been registered in the mangrove area in the country. According to the report, the country would have 4,992 square kilometer of mangrove area by 2021. However, on the other hand, reduction in forest cover area has also been registered in many states. The maximum reduction in forest cover has been observed in the five states of the Northeast, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Nagaland. Recently, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has announced new rules for the exhibition of films. In this, guidelines related to screening of films have been issued. The Ministry has proposed to rationalize the screening of PSA, that is Public Service Awareness Films, in the theatres. According to the Ministry, it is mandatory for all film exhibitors, theatre owners, digital cinema service providers to display these PSA films. Along with this, it has been set to screen all government films during prime screen time. Significantly earlier, the duration of PSA films was 15 to 20 minutes. It has been reduced to 2 minutes under the Cinematograph Bill 2021. 
Changes have also been made in the certification categories of films in the cinematograph bill. According to the new category, the category of U that is universal will be modified. Also unrestricted public exhibition that is U category has been expanded. This includes children over the age of 7. Apart from this, strict rules have also been made to stop the piracy of the film. If found guilty, there is a provision of imprisonment of 3 years for the person. Along with this, a fine of rupees 10 lakh can also be imposed. Let us tell you that CBFC that is Central Board of Film Certification will soon set up a digital portal. Through this online distribution and feedback of PSA films will be monitored. Along with this certificates will also be issued to these films through the portal. Significantly PSA films are mainly produced by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. They are made with the aim of increasing awareness among the public. These films are mainly based on the history and contemporary events of India. While talking about CBFC that is Central Board of Film Certification, it was established under the 1952 Cinematograph Act. Categories of the films are determined by it. Recently Microsoft researchers have made new discoveries in the field of quantum computing. Research has found that the use of Majorana zero modes can bring a new revolution in the field of quantum computing. Speaking of Majorana zero modes, these are particles that can be used as qubits in topological quantum computing. These particles exhibit non-abelian statistics and it is difficult to erase the information contained in these particles. It is with these properties that the Majorana zero mode enables topological quantum computing. Let us tell you that such particles which are their own antiparticle these are called Majorana fermions. These particles were discovered by Italian scientist Ettore Majorana. Fermions are named in honor of the scientist Majorana. Significantly topological quantum computing is a powerful form of computing. Let us understand how quantum computers are different from present day computers. In fact, present day computers store information in the form of binary that is 0 and 1 states, whereas quantum computers use quantum bits. With the help of quantum computers, it is easy to solve complex problems. Seeing its importance, the government of India has taken several steps in the direction of quantum computers. For example, the government has established a quantum computing laboratory and artificial intelligence center in Madhya Pradesh. Apart from this, quantum communication lab was also launched in 2021. This lab can support more than 100 km standard optical fiber. Along with this, the government has also allocated rupees 8000 crore under the national mission in this year's budget to promote quantum technologies. At present AMR that is antimicrobial resistance is being considered as a major threat to public health. AMR is a condition when microbes sensitive to a certain drug stop responding to that drug. The reason behind this is that the microbes develop resistance to that drug. Microorganisms that have developed antimicrobial resistance are known as superbugs. Humans and animals fall prey to AMR due to improper use of medicines. Also AMR spreads among humans through their food water and environment contaminated water and waste material facilitate the spread of AMR at present India has taken several steps to fight AMR the national action plan on AMR was launched in 2017 it focuses on health approach it was launched with an aim to involve various stakeholder departments Let us tell you that AMR has also been given priority in the health agenda of G20. Apart from this, India has set up labs in government medical colleges to test for AMR. This step has strengthened the AMR surveillance network. So far, 36 sites in 26 states and union territories have been included in this network. Along with this, ICMR that is Indian Council of Medical Research has established AMR surveillance network. Under this ICMR has included 30 hospitals to understand the pattern of drug resistant infections in the country. This includes government hospitals as well as private hospitals. It has been named as AMR Surveillance and Research Network. Let us tell you that in the year 2017 ICMR made a joint effort in the field of antimicrobial resistance with Norway. Germany is also supporting India in the fight against AMR. Both the countries are jointly engaged in research related to AMR. 
According to a WHO report in the year 2019, around 1.27 million people lost their lives due to AMR bacteria. To increase awareness among people about this disease, the World Health Organization has started the campaign of World Antimicrobial Awareness Week. This awareness week is organized from 18th to 24th of November. A recent research has claimed that climate change has changed the color of 56% of the world's oceans. According to research, the color of the ocean waters in the tropical regions of the world has turned green. The significant color change is particularly observed in the southern Indian Ocean. Significantly, the green color indicates the presence of life in the water. The water is green in color due to the presence of phytoplankton. Let us tell you that phytoplankton are microscopic aquatic organisms. They make their food with the help of chlorophyll. These creatures mostly swim in the upper part of the sea. This is the reason that due to the increase or decrease in the population of these microorganisms, there is a change in the color of the sea. Apart from this, the color of the ocean also determines the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the ocean. According to reports, at present, the oceans absorb about 25% of the total carbon dioxide emissions. According to the researchers, they have done this research on the basis of two models to check the changes due to climate change. The first model included greenhouse gases, whereas the second model was used without greenhouse gases. It found that when greenhouse gas emissions were increased in the first model, seawater began to change color due to temperature rise. Recently, UNDP, that is United Nations Development Programme, has released Multidimensional Poverty Index or MPI 2023. According to this report, a total of 415 million people in India have been able to move out of poverty. And India has achieved this feat in the last 15 years. It has been told in this report that about 25 countries, including India, have halved their global MPI values within 15 years. Apart from India, these countries include Cambodia, China, Congo, Serbia, and Vietnam. If we look at the recent statistics in the context of India, there has been a huge reduction in the poverty rate in the country. Whereas in the year 2005-06, 55.1% people were below the poverty line. At the same time, this figure has come down to 16.4%, while the child mortality rate has come down from 4.5% to 1.5%. At the same time, the population of people deprived under the nutrition indicator has declined from 44.3% to 11.8%. The positive thing is that there has been a huge decline in the number of people deprived of cooking fuel. In the year 2005, where 52.9% people were deprived of cooking fuel, in the year 2021, this figure has come down to 13.9%. Apart from this, India has also achieved progress in the field of sanitation. Fifteen years ago, where 50% of the country's population was deprived of sanitation, now this figure has reduced to 11.3%. Recent reports say that in 110 countries of the world, more than 18% of the population lives in the state of severe poverty, in which almost 5 out of every 6 people in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia are poor. In this too, almost half of the total number of poor people are children under the age of 18 years. Statistics say that the poverty rate among children is 27.7%, while among adults it is 13.4%. 84% of poor people live in rural areas, that is, in all the regions of the world, rural areas are poorer than urban areas. Let us tell you that MPI is released by UNDP and OPHI, that is Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Through this report, the poverty situation is measured in more than 100 developing countries. It uses 10 indicators such as health, education and basic amenities. Recently, the Ministry of Education has released the Performance Grading Index for Districts or PGIT. This report has been prepared by the Ministry in collaboration with the Department of School Education and Literacy. This report is for the year 2021-22 in which a total of 748 districts were included. According to this report, in the year 2021-22, only 51 districts have been able to join the category of Ati Uttam. Districts in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Odisha are included in the category of Ati Uttam. Whereas in Union Territories, the districts of Delhi, Chandigarh, 
दादरा नगर हवेली हैव मेड इट इन टू द कैटेगरी ऑफ अति उत्तम इन द रिपोर्ट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैव बिन डिवाइडेड इन टू कैटेगरीज लाइक दक्ष उत्कर्ष अति उत्तम उत्तम प्रचेष्टा वन टू अकॉर्डिंग टू देअर परफॉर्मेंस However none of the districts could get the top 2 grades Daksh and Utkarsh The lowest grade in this is called Akanshi 3 which is for the score up to 10% of the total marks Significantly the PGID report is prepared on the basis of 83 indicators it carries a total weightage of 600 marks The subjects for assessment are divided into 6 categories and further these 6 categories are divided into 12 domains which includes domains like teacher availability school safety and child protection infrastructure facilities opportunities for students learning management this index measures the performance of the school education system at the district level it was started in the year 2017-18 and so far five annual reports have been issued the purpose of this report is to assist districts with priority areas of intervention in school education Recently GPI that is Global Peace Index 2023 has been released. A total of 163 countries have been ranked in this index. In this index of 2023 Iceland is at the first position while Afghanistan has got the last place. Apart from Afghanistan, Yemen and Syria are also included in the list of most troubled countries. Let us tell you that Iceland has been on top of this index since 2008. On the other hand, if we talk about India in this index, India has jumped Nine places and secured 126th rank, while it got 135th rank last year in 2022. If we look at India's neighboring countries, Bhutan has got 17th place. Nepal and China are ranked 79th and 80th respectively, while Sri Lanka and Pakistan are ranked 107th and 146th. Looking at the global scenario in the recent report, the average level of global peace has dropped to 0.42%. Although in the year 2022 84 countries have registered an improvement in their peace status on the other hand 79 countries have shown a decline in their peace status Apart from this the report says that in the last 15 years the world has moved towards unrest Currently the score has dropped to an average of 5% globally Let us tell you that the global peace index is released by the Institute for Economics and Peace Its 17th edition has been released in the year 2023. This index is determined using 23 qualitative and quantitative indicators and it mainly measures the state of peace in three areas. This includes social security, ongoing domestic and international conflicts and militarization. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this bulletin are first question is Consider the following statements one cancer drug dinutuximab has been kept out of the purview of GST two the GST meeting is presided over by the prime minister of the country three GST was implemented under the 101st constitutional amendment act how many of the above statement or statements is or are correct only one only two all three or none Next question is with reference to Majorana zero modes consider the following statements one google researchers have made a new discovery related to this two these particles show non abelian data three pre majorana zero mode is named after the italian scientist how many of the above statement or statements is or are not correct only one only two all three or none Next question is with reference to antimicrobial resistance consider the following statements one microorganisms that have developed antimicrobial resistance are called superbugs two this disease spreads through contaminated water and waste material three antimicrobial resistance awareness week is celebrated in the month of november how many of the above statement or statements is or are correct only one only two all three or none Next question is consider the following statements one according to the world bank report there has been a huge reduction in the poverty rate in india two at present 16.4% people in india come under the category of poor three at present the child mortality rate in the country is 5.5% which of the above statement or statements is or are correct only one only two all three or none Last question is with reference to the Global Peace Index 2023 consider the following statements 
one Iceland has got the first place, two India is at 135th position, three Afghanistan ranks last in the peace index this year. How many of the above statement or statements is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The 11th meeting of the Executive Board of the Association of World Election Bodies was held recently. The conference was held in Cartagena, Colombia. It was attended by the Chief Election Commissioner of India, Sri Rajiv Kumar. A discussion on the theme A Global View on the Challenges of Regional Elections 2023 was organized on the occasion. The Association of World Election Bodies was established in October 2013 in Seoul, Republic of Korea. It aims to move towards achieving sustainable democracy around the world through strengthening election management processes in the member countries. It has 119 members and 20 regional associations as associate members. The Election Commission of India had been the chairman of this body from 2019 to 2022. Recently, the Peruvian government has declared a national emergency for three months due to a disease called Guillain-Barr syndrome. It is a rare neurological disease in which the body's immune system attacks its own peripheral nerve cells. In other words, the myelin sheath swells, which is an insulating layer of fat and protein. In such a situation, the person starts having difficulty in speaking, walking, swallowing, defecating or doing other normal functions of the body. In severe cases, the peripheral nerves, that is the nerves that come out of the brain and spinal cord, are damaged and the muscles can become weak or paralyzed. The exact cause of Guillain-Barr syndrome is not yet known, however, it often develops soon after a person has had an infectious disease. Recently, the Supreme Court stated the extension of the third term of the Director of ED, that is Enforcement Directorate. However, the court has upheld the statutory amendments that facilitate extension of the tenure of the directors of CBI and ED. After the central government appointed Sanjay Mishra as ED director for two years, in November 2018, he was given extension twice. But the extension of the third term was stayed by the court. The Supreme Court upheld the provision of giving extension to CBI and ED chiefs for five years, which was done by amending the Central Vigilance Commission Act and the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act but directed to use it only in rare and exceptional cases. In order to clean the river Ganga, turtles are being used to clean Ganga River under the Namami Gange program. In fact, India's first turtle breeding and rehabilitation center was established in the Ganga River in Varanasi with the joint efforts of the Forest and Wildlife Department and the Wildlife Institute of India. Turtles eat meat and waste products thrown into the river. The quality of water in the Ganga has improved after this experiment in Varanasi. It is believed that turtle breeding and rehabilitation centers will be established in other areas of River Ganga in future. Recently, the G20 Working Group meeting concluded in Hampi region of Karnataka. During this meeting, more than 450 Lambani women artisans displayed the largest ever display of Sandur Lambani embroidery items consisting of 1,755 patchwork. For this unique work, the artisans have registered their names in the Guinness World Records. Lambani embroidery is mainly done by the women of the Lambani community of Karnataka. It is practiced in many villages of the state such as Sandur, Keri Tanda, Maria Manahali, Kadirampur and Kamlapur. This art has also been given GI tag that is geographical indication tag in the year 2010. Recently, another cheetah, Tejas, from South Africa died in Kuno National Park. To restore cheetahs in India in September 2022, eight cheetahs were brought from Namibia under Project Cheetah. After this, in December 2022, 12 cheetahs came to India from South Africa. All these cheetahs were conserved in Kuno National Park. Seven of these cheetahs have died in the last few months, including two cubs. These cubs were born in India only. Significantly, in the 90s, cheetahs were declared extinct in India. Recently, the Odisha cabinet passed a resolution to include Kui language in the eighth schedule of the constitution. Kui is a language mainly spoken by the Kandha tribe of Odisha. If this language is included in the eighth schedule of the constitution, it will help in the protection, promotion and dissemination of this language and more than 7 lakh Kui speakers will be benefited by it. Presently, 22 Indian languages have been included in the eighth schedule of the constitution. Report Fish Disease app has been developed to detect diseases in fish. In fact, aquaculture is one of the fastest growing food producing sectors and has a huge role to play in meeting the growing demand for protein. In addition, this sector provides livelihood and employment to about 3 crore fishermen and fish farmers in the country. 
diseases in fishes are a serious obstacle to the development of aquaculture and cause huge economic losses to the farmers. To get control over such diseases, it is necessary to detect it soon. Therefore, this mobile app has been developed under the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana for quick reporting of fish diseases and timely scientific advisory to the aquaculture farmers.